Good afternoon, free world. How's everybody doing out there? I hope everybody's being safe. Take good care of yourself and your family and remaining free from the virus. My name is Bob, and uh, today I'm going to do things a little different. I'm going to ask them, answer, excuse me, answer a lot of your questions that have been posed to me. So, let's start with the first one. <coughs> uh, a lot of people have been making comments about how quiet it is and that this is the quietest prison they've ever heard of. And therefore it's got to be bullshit. So, I decided that I would make a video and show you exactly how I keep things quiet. As I've said many times before, I put a video, excuse me, I put a mattress uh, up against my door. So that covers the trace lot and all the cracks around the sides and the bottom. Therefore, anybody walking by can't hear me talking. And it keeps all the noise from the pod out. Now, I don't know if you can hear it or not. You should be able to hear the background noise today. Just for the purposes of you all hearing noise, I don't have a mattress up in the door. All I have in the door today is uh, something covering the window. So, I shouldn't be talking this loud. Anyway, that's how I keep the noise out. And uh, now let me show you what it looks like. Alright, there you see it. That's my cell door with the mattress pressed up in it. That's how I keep it quiet in here so no one can hear. Yep. There's a better look for you. So, all you naysayers out there who say ain't no prison that quiet. Just goes to show you're not as smart as you think you are. Now, when I first read this next question, I laughed. But after thinking about it for a couple minutes, I realized that. It that's a very good question, because I have been locked up since I was 14 years old. The question was, have you ever had sex with a woman? Well, the answer to that question is not just yes, but many times. Um, back in the 70s, 80s, and through the 90s, most prison visitation rooms were pretty slack and there were ways that you could have sex with your girlfriend or wife or whoever came to see you. Uh, some of the methods were people would sneak behind the soap machines and vending machines. Usually there would be a long row of vending machines up against the wall and Prisoners are usually assigned to clean visitation rooms. So what we would do is the guy who works out there, he would uh, go out there before visitation and set everything up, and he would slide the vending machines away from the wall enough so that you could squeeze back there. Another method was sneaking into the bathrooms or sneaking into a closet. Um, and then there were some people that just uh, would get a little head from their girl right at the table. She would just duck down underneath them. Now, I personally would never do something like that because I respect women, women and <laughs> I wouldn't have a woman that's going to give me a blowjob in front of the whole visiting room. No, thank you. 
And there was one prison that I was at in the 80s where uh, there was two visitation rooms. And uh, on one side, they had bathrooms and a closet with a sink, rooms and all stuff like that in it. And the officer who worked in that visiting room would charge you five dollars for ten to fifteen minutes in the closet. All the officers wanted to work in that visiting room on visiting days because of the amount of money that they could make in one day. They only charged five dollars, but they could make a nice, nice uh, amount of money through the course of the day. And at this particular facility, they had visitation seven days a week. So, you know, you could make a lot of money. And then, so, before I get to the CEO, um, you know, I had a lot of girlfriends over the years, despite the fact that I was locked up. And I even had a wife who I married while I was in prison. But uh, she died of cancer in the late 90s. Uh, and then the last time I had sex was just over 20 years ago. I uh, had a female CEO whose husband, husband actually worked at the facility I was at and he got fired. She was having marrow problems and she used to like to talk to me a lot and uh, kept confiding in me. And uh, after a while, she called herself developing feelings. And uh, one thing led to another, and then, you know, we had our little love affair going on for a little over a year. And uh, fortunately, the housing unit that I was in was not there. It was a uh, honor building, and uh, security was a little lax in there, and so I was able to sneak in the bathroom with her once, twice a week, every week, uh, in the staff bathroom. You know, just be a little quickie, you know, bend over the sink, hit it from behind, you know, that type of thing. But that went on for over a year, and. Uh, all good things got to come to an end. And that did. She confessed when she was questioned. We never got caught in the act, but she confessed. And uh, they forced her to resign. Then they transferred me back to maximum security prison. So it's been 20 years since I've had any. Unfortunately, visitation rooms now in the state I'm in. Uh, at the higher levels, just don't allow for you to uh, get in it. The security is so tight. So now I'm relegated to Agnes and Judy. That's the only sex I get. Oh, for those of you who don't know, Agnes, Judy. Judy's my favorite. <laughs> Somebody else asked me if I was able to go anywhere and do anything right this very minute, what would I do? Well, my favorite place is the beach. One time when I escaped, I lived right on the beach. And uh, I would go take a walk every night around midnight. That was my sanctuary. So if I could do anything right now, I would have a pretty woman on my arm, and I would go take a walk along the beach at night when the sun getting ready to set, and uh, watch the moon and the stars, and enjoy the breeze and the salt water in the air. That would be what I would want to do right this minute. I love the beach. Alright, let's
let's see, another question that was asked is, Bob, how do you keep the other prisoners quiet? Well, it's really easy. I just take my knife and put it up in their throat and threaten to kill them if they run their mouth. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, I don't have to do anything to keep the other prisoners quiet because nobody had knows that I have a phone. You know, I've learned the hard way that you cannot trust anybody in here. So, I've never let anybody know that I have a phone. And that's why I've been able to survive so long. The only person that knows is my roommate. And I got a roommate that knows how to keep his mouth shut and mind his own business. So I don't have to worry about him saying anything to anybody. Uh, unfortunately, he's getting ready to go home here this year. And uh, it's going to be hard to find another roommate that I'm going to be able to trust, you know. If I can't find one, then uh, the videos are going to be much more limited unless they open this place up. You know, now that they're coming out with vaccines out there, uh, maybe once they vac give everybody in here the vaccine, maybe they'll open things back up and take us out on lockdown. Now that would be good because then I could get the celly out of the room so that, uh, you know, I can make my videos, but, uh, otherwise it's going to be tough. I hate having a roommate. I hate it. No offense to my roommate or anything, because he's a good dude, but I don't want to live with no other man. Forget that. What is the craziest thing I've ever seen in prison? Oh man, I have seen a lot of stuff over the last 46 years, but hands down, the craziest thing I ever saw was this guy took LSD, and I don't know what his trick was, but he stripped himself naked, he shit and pissed all over the floor of the cell, then he smeared it all over himself and started eating the shit. Had the whole block stink. And the police didn't do anything for two or three days. The only reason they finally did something was because he had to go to an out-of-court, outside-court uh, thing. You know, he had some kind of court appearance to go to. And uh, he was still tripping a couple days later. Still eating shit. And the police, this was the good part. The police had to go in there and drag him out, drag him to the shower and wash him and clean him up to take him to court. That was the good part. But that sh was so sickening. The smell of crap was terrible. And to watch this guy eat it and like it and love it. And, you know, he's making all these sounds like, oh, like it's so good, you know, like, like he's in a five-star restaurant or something. So that, hands down, is the craziest thing I've seen in 46 years. The next craziest would have been a guy getting ready to go home. Oh, shit, I gotta go. Alright, sorry about the uh, interruption. Where did I leave off? Oh, Lieutenant O. Yeah, another crazy thing. I, I think it was crazy anyway. Back in 1979, this dude's getting ready to go home. He done mandatory this time. He had done about 10, 15 years. He'd been locked up since the 60s, I know that much. And, uh, he had mandatory this time, so he was stupid enough to think that there's nothing they could do to him. And he's out front at the administration building being processed out. They got to beef him with Lieutenant Oden. Lieutenant Oden was a nasty old dude. And uh, the 
got the bar again. Lieutenant Odom started calling him all kind of niggers. And, uh, dude went off, two pieced him, knocked him out when he hit the ground and head hit the cement and split his head open. And, of course, all the police came in and beat the brakes off of him. Then, needless to say, he didn't go home that day. He went to the county jail where he was arrested and eventually got more time. So, I think that was pretty damn crazy. Another question I was asked is, have I ever seen anybody murdered? And have I ever seen anybody raped? Yes, I've seen quite a few of both of those things. Um, let's see. I, I would think that one of the craziest murders I saw was back in the early 80s. At this particular facility I was at, when you went to the chow hall, you, uh, <clears throat> when you went to the chow hall, when you walked out, you went straight out onto the rec yard. And you had to stay out there until they were done feeding. And, uh, then you could go your merry way. And, uh, out on the rec yard, they had some old raggedy, homemade benches and a bunch of crappy weights. They didn't have the universal stuff out there. And uh, so these two dudes were beefing. Both of them were pretty buff too. And uh, they were arguing about something and you know, they threw a couple of blows and somebody split them up and uh, one of the dudes went and sat down on the bench and uh, put six quarters on each side of the bar. So that's 300 pounds plus the bar was probably 25 pounds. And uh, he reps it five or six times and then he starts getting slow, kind of struggling to get it up, you know. And he's got it about halfway up and dude ran up and pulled out a knife that was anywhere from 18 to 24 inches long and stabbed him right in the center of his chest. And the knife literally went through him and stuck into the wooden bench. You know, the bench, the board on it was wooden. And it pinned him to the bench. Now at first, the weights fell back on his chest. And then the dude that hit him he thought he was dead when the weight fell back on his chest. And he started walking away with his chest poked out, talking shit. You know, like, yeah, a motherfucker shouldn't have fucked with me. Well, while he's walking away, that dude somehow mustered the strength to put that weight back in the rack. And once he got it in the rack, he tried to sit up and he was pinned to the bench. He reached up with both hands and grabbed the knife and pulled it out of his chest. Then he jumped up, looked left, looked right, saw the dude. The dude was still walking away talking shit. And he ran up behind him and stabbed him right in the back and the thing went through to the front of him. And then he fell down dead. The other dude who he stabbed in the back. You can see the knife sticking out the front of him. And uh, it actually went through his heart. But that's what saved him was the knife was stuck between the ribs and they couldn't pull it out. And so that's what saved him. You know, because the knife stayed in him until they got him to the outside hospital. And he ended up living. But yeah, that was one of the craziest uh, killings I ever saw. So anyway, um, oh, one more thing, the rapes. Well, you know, that stuff happens from time to time. I never sit there and watch any of these things occur. However, there are a couple of instances 
one in particular in the showers. Well, as a matter of fact, you know what, I'm not even going to tell you today. I'll save this for another video. But I'm just going to put it like this. That rapist, he's not dead, but he probably wishes he's dead. Because he will never rape another man again in his life. I'll tell you all about that some other time. Alright, I'm going to wrap this thing up. It's a little bit too long now. I try to keep these things short. But uh, if you have any more questions, you can drop them in the comments. And uh, I'll pick five or six of them to answer next time. Uh, just so you know, I do read all the comments. And I want to say that I truly appreciate all the love people are showing. It really amazes me. Uh, all the positive feedback I'm receiving in the comments from people. So I thank you all. And uh, we'll see you next time.